How's it gaming? I'm Phil in the Blanks, and welcome to Sorcerer's Apprentice for the Atari 2600, which I think might be the very, very first home console Disney game. There were a couple other Disney video games before that, um, but they were both for the Game & Watch, as far as I could find out on the internet. Uh, so this is, yeah, this might be the very first Disney game for a home console. Let's just get right in there. And it looks exactly what you'd expect a Mickey Mouse Atari game to look like. <laughs> Mickey and it's all his epic glory. This is obviously based on The Sorcerer's Apprentice, the scene from Fantasia, where Mickey dons the sorcerer's hat and uh, messes up a bunch of things by bringing a bunch of brooms to life and flooding uh, flooding the, the, the house, basically. And uh, this recreates that fairly well for an Atari game. It is two games and when we get down to it, we're right now kind of shooting stars and meteors with, with a fireball, I guess. It's very weird, but if you leave the side of the screen and go down here, now you're in the room with the brooms and buckets that are kind of at war with each other. So let's go back up there, let's explain the actual game. So there are stars and there are meteors coming down. From what I can gather from, from the manual, it's if you let the stars go down through the little mountain path there, uh, they become brooms that'll bring water in, and you don't want that. And the uh, meteorites are, uh, if you destroy them, they become the buckets that bring the water out. So you see right here, we got a little broom, oh, and there are bucket and brooms. And the brooms will always push the buckets back down. So you need to kind of attack the brooms with Mickey. So let's get a few of these. Get some brooms going, I guess. Um, you can also catch stars with your hat, but the manual doesn't say why you'd want to do that. I think it maybe just for points or something. I have no idea. Uh, and the bottom, the orange line at the bottom is how much water is in the room. So it's a high score game. They almost always were back then. That's, it was very rare that they weren't, if it was like a sport game, maybe, but there were a few adventure e games, but most of the time it was a high score game. I already have a thousand points. You want to attack the brooms without stepping off the uh, stairs, because that will make you fall. And you need to get all of the brooms, or else the buckets cannot make it to the top and drain the area. See, the water rises as they keep going down. Oh, I fell off, and that pen penalizes you by making you go really slowly back up. Now we're back up here. I mean... The water rises pretty slowly. It does start getting faster, but right now it's at a very comfortable pace, but it's hard to hit the brooms properly. You gotta, gotta be weirdly precise of where Mickey is hitting them. There we go, and now the buckets can leave, and that drains the area. And now I gotta go up there and kind of restock on brooms by attacking meteors. Don't know why? Um, that's a weird thing. I mean, I, I get where they're getting the whole broom and, and bucket thing. The meteors and stars? I don't know, maybe it's a part of Fantasia I forgot. I have no idea, but that's the game, basically. You kind of keep going until you die, and that's what we're going to do. But overall, like, I have played not a whole lot of Atari games, but we, we had... We didn't have an Atari. We had a Mattel and Television, which was, like, the direct competitor to the Atari. Uh, and they were very similar types of games. And I played a lot of those. We had, like, 30 of those uh, growing up before we had the Nintendo. And this is pretty much what that generation of video games was like, the second generation of video games, when um, consoles started having cartridges uh, for their games, because the, a little history lesson, I guess, um, most of the first generation of video game consoles were stuff like the Magnavox Odyssey and uh, Pong, where they were basically just one machine with one game on it. And now you could change the settings with like some toggles on the machine itself, but basically it was one game. Um, and I think, uh, don't quote me on this, I think it's the Fairchild Channel F that was the first game console with, like, interchangeable cartridges. It's been a long time since I've, I've like, read up on my history of this stuff. But basically, the second generation was where uh, interchangeable cartridges, each cartridge holding a game, was the norm. Became the normal thing. Uh, the Atari 2600 was clearly the winner there. Uh, and then you had, like, the Mattel Television, the ColecoVision, uh, Games like that, machines like that. This is like kind of what they all sort of looked like. Um, they were very, very basic. The beeps and boops were very beeps and boops. Uh, and that's why when Nintendo like brought the Famicom over as the Nintendo Entertainment System it was such a big deal because these games were leaps and bounds anything we we had ever seen in North America. Uh, Music-wise, graphic-wise, was incredible. And uh, even though the Famicom was released in 83, 
In Japan, it was released here as the Nintendo Entertainment System in 85. By that point, Super Mario Brothers was a thing, and, ooh, the water's getting really high. Uh, and you can see, like, the difference between an Atari game and a Nintendo game. Uh, now, obviously, the Nintendo does have some, like, very arcade-y, uh, high score games, obviously, but they were closer to, like, arcade, like, perfect. Not perfect, but, like, you could play Donkey Kong on it, you could play Galaga, you could play Galaxian and Pac-Man. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Oh, oh, I was like, a couple, I thought all my buckets were gone. No, no, if even one broom gets past me, all my buckets get pushed down, so it's very difficult. But it looks like I am, oh, no, it's coming back up. Uh, I need, come on, I need some. Yes, there we go. Yes, my buckets, go. No, 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 damn. You also, also can't go into the water past, like, where I am right now. Uh, so it gets much harder the more water there is. It's very frustrating. I need more, I need more buckets. It starts getting overwhelming pretty quickly. But it's fun. Like I said, I've played a lot of these games for the television, and it was pretty cool. My favorite one actually was a Mattel and television game called Astro Blast. Growing up, that was probably my favorite. We had, we had quite a few of them, Lock and Chase, and a lot of sport games, which I didn't really care about other than, like, bowling. But yeah. This is what video games were like, boys and girls. Question of the day. Are you old enough to be a, a part of that old generation of video games, like the Intellivision and the Atari? I'm getting screwed. I'm going to die. Here you here go. Yeah, um, I technically was. I was born in 85. The NES was out. We didn't get one until uh, 1990, I think. So I grew up with a lot of these kind of smaller games. And I played some NES, like Cousins House and that sort of thing. But yeah, we're screwed. This is it. Still, though, it's a lot of fun. Like, it, these are kind of games you just sit down, play with a couple friends, maybe get high scores. Uh, if you can, get the Atari 50th Anniversary, uh, whatever it's called, for the um, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. It is fantastic. It has so much history in it. Oh, oh, we died. Oh, well. Yeah, I get that if you like this type of old, older type of game. But that is what video games were like before Nintendo came to town. I'm Phil in the Blanks. See you next level. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.